Jigen, this money's counterfeit. You sure, boss? Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's a amazing, um, extremely close, but it's still counterfeit. But it, look, it looks so real. Look, it, it, it looks like the real deal. It's, what, it's the best counterfeit I've ever seen. Whoever did this must be a genius. This is so, so very real, as you say. Um, but yes, yeah, still counterfeit. So, yeah, it's an amazing job, though. So, so, so what now, boss? Well, we need to go and find the person who uh, made these counterfeit notes. Um, in the meantime, we might as well dump these ones. Right way ahead of you, boss. Wee! Right. Let's go and find who, um, whoever uh, made these. Whatever you say, boss. Right with you until the end. Because I'm the loyal one. I'm the most loyal one. Off we go! <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here and welcome to my review of Lupin the Third, The Castle of Cagliai, Cagliai, Cagliaistro, I'm probably going to botch that name, um, or just simply The Castle of Cagliaistro, again probably going to botch that name, I apologise. Um, okay, so this film is the second of the Lupin the Third films and this is the first uh, theatrical film directed by... Eizo Miyazaki, I can't remember the f first name that well, but um, Miyazaki, who along with another Loop on the Third director and another anime director would go on to create Studio Ghibli, which has become Japan's most celebrated um, anim uh, anime, t uh, anime film companies with Miyazaki, their most celebrated directors, and or at least one of them. And this is his theatrical film debut with a property that he has known for a couple, good couple of years, having directed a couple of episodes of Lupin the First, uh, Third Part 1 series, and also we're going to do two episodes of Part 2. It's a shame he never came back afterwards, but he had bigger things to, uh, coming up later that, later in his life, so it makes sense. Okay, so uh, before we get in, I'd just like, uh, would like to explain, as I've previously mentioned in my Innocence review, that um, review slash rant, I recently, well, so recently, mid-November 2019, got into Lupin the Third um, series and franchise, and I've seen all the parts four and five, and some of parts one, two, and three, and now I'm going to be watching some of the films. Um, not quite, can't quite access Mystery of Mamo, uh, the first film, although hopefully when I do get around to that review, and that goes first in the playlist, and you're watching it in film order, then that's going to be irrelevant. But until then, that's the case. But I will definitely be checking out films two to five and doing reviews here. And this is the second film, The Castle of Cagliostro, the most popular of all Lupin and the most accessible for uh, those, especially those in the UK like myself, where it's um, it's not very easy to find um, certain um, Lupin. It's not that well known outside of Japan, despite being one of its most prop uh, popular properties, uh, franchises. Okay, so the Castle of Cag 
Cagliostro. The plot sees Lupin, or in the version I watched, they call it in they, uh, the English dubbing, the, there's two versions. Uh, the first one, uh, due to copyright reasons, um, the character, because uh, Lupin is named after Ansel Lupin, the, a French character created by Maurice Leblanc, I, can't, I think, and there were some copyright issues at the time, so in the 1991 English dub, um, he uh, Lupin was referred to as the Wolf, uh, the Wolf. Although I think it might have changed for the 2000 dub, um, but I think the version I watched, which was shown on Channel Four and um, back in 2018, and on Box Broadcast, which I got uh, to use, um, to the first time I've used it for a non film I have to watch for uni. Um, so take, as I mentioned, taking advantage of it whilst I've got the time. And so I think this is the, the version I watched is the 1991 version, as they refer to the character as the wolf. And I've also a couple of names are changed or different, um, such as Zenigata's first name. Um, but anyway, so Lupin or the wolf in the version I watched, but I'll just refer to him as Lupin because that's the character. And his partner, Drask, 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 Drask Jagen, uh, Jigen, uh, they rob a casino, possibly in Japan, um, and they, well, they escape. Um, it looks like um, a certain samurai has smashed up the cars, but this certain samurai does not pop up in the film just yet, so maybe it was just Lupin and Jigen um, just damaging the cars, possibly, or certain, the said certain samurai, who I'll talk about later, he is a main character, although he doesn't get much to do in this film, um, but maybe he disappeared by then and just came back when they needed him next. Um, but anyway, Lupin and Jaken are escaping from the casino when they realise that the money they have is a counterfeit, a very good counterfeit, the best Lupin's ever seen. So the pair head to the small country of Cagliostro, which is presumably near Italy? Question mark? Maybe. Um, where they head and try to find out who's been creating counterfeit money. Um, Lupin then re um, starts to have, uh, he starts to reflect on that the fact he's been here before and how he had, he had previously tried to get into the castle um, of the castle of the title of the film to, uh, as one of his early, earlier attempts 10 years prior. Ooh, 10 years prior to this, that would have been the pilot film, the uh, pilot short uh, episode. So, um, that's interesting. <laughs> well, I thought it was established by the pilot short. Never mind. Um, uh, to be honest, the continuity of uh, the Lupin series is st uh, stranger than the James Bond pre-Casino Royale timeline. It's uh, it's a bit all over the place. Uh, it's maybe not worth bothering trying to fit it all into one timeline. But however, on their way to the castle, Lupin and Jaken have to first help a girl being pursued by bandits. And it turns out this uh, girl is Princess Clar Clarissa. Um, yeah, Clarissa, who is um, the, ne the heir, uh, next in line for the throne of Cag Cagliostro. Um, Lupin saves her from the bandits, but he, they have a bit of an accident and he gets knocked out a little bit. Um, Clarissa does try to run again from the ban uh, bandits, but she is captured. Um, so Lupin and Jigen go to the, uh, try and fight, uh, rescue her, which is where Lupin starts to reflect on his uh, previous um, attempts to break into the castle. Uh, it turns out these bandits are working for the Count, who is a relation of Clarissa, and um, it turns out that they're on two sides of a light and dark side of the family. He's dark, she's light, and he plans to unite the family together by forcing Clarissa to marry him so that they can use their two rings to open um, something and find the lost treasure of Cag Cagliostro. And it turns out that he is the one behind all of the counterfeit operation. And it turns out later on in the film to be an extensive operation operating worldwide. So Lupin, Jagen, and our certain samurai, Goemon Ishiwaka the 13th, who joins them a little bit later on, they attempt to break into the castle. Well, Lupin and Jagen do. Uh, Goemon just sits around and watches them. I told you he didn't have much in this film, which is a bit of a shame. Um, meanwhile, our fourth main character of the film, um, Future Komini, has always already infiltrated ca uh, the Count's castle as the princess is made. And whilst that's going on, Lupin has um, sent a message to Inspector uh, Kurochi Zenigata, or um, as I think they've changed his first name for the uh, 91 English dub, as I've already mentioned. Um, but for short, we'll just call him Zenigata. 
Um, that's how the characters refer to him um, when they're not calling him nicknames like Pops or stuff. But yeah, um, so Lupin has uh, informed in Inspector Zenigata that he will be breaking into Cagli uh, Cagliostro's castle so that uh, as part of a plan uh, to expose the um, counterfeit operation. And throughout the rest of the film, Lupin, Zenigata, Fujiko and Clarissa have to escape the Count and try to expose his counterfeit pro uh, operations with with help from Jagin and Goemon and Lupin and Cl has to try and rescue Clarissa from the Count's evil clutches with a partnership with Zenigata throughout most of the uh, most of the middle, um, and eventually cum culminating in some pretty epic climaxes. This film is, by the way, is spectacular animated. So, um, so. Castle Cacaristo, spectacular film, just absolutely spectacular. For starters, they didn't have very much time or budget to make this film. They had about seven months, five in production, um, but seven months total to make the film before a December 79 release in Japan. The budget, I don't think, was terribly big. So the film could easily have been a disaster and looked rushed. However, they put so much heart, time and effort into making this film in the short time that they had with the budget they had. And it looks spectacular. The animation is beautiful. The ex the adventure side is exciting. And even has some great slow down moments to uh, reflect on the emotions. Not to mention some amazing character moments between Lupin and Jigen, Lupin and Clarissa, and even uh, Lupin and Zenigata. Plus a few nice moments between Lupin and or Clarissa, Clarissa and Fujiko. Um... The Count is a formidable villain. He is really fun and enjoyable. Clarissa is a good um, supporting character. And our main characters, besides Goemon, are better than ever, in my opinion, um, than they've been. Well, maybe to a lesser extent for Fujiko, but definitely for Lupin, Jagan and Zenigata. Goemon, sadly, is the weak link in this film due to not having much to do. Uh, he does have a few moments, but he doesn't really get enough to do. And Zenigata, not Zenigata, Z uh, Jagan does kind of get uh, sidelined later on as the film goes on but he still gets some great stuff to do with Lupin earlier on in the film and he's still really great as well in his um smaller moments later on as well I actually really enjoyed Lupin and Zenigata working together quite a lot I think they do this a few times in the anime but this one particularly was fun as it was in both of their interests and uh, just seeing Fujiko go all out commando midway through the film was also a, a pretty cool and I do actually like the fact that this this film is actually going a bit more family friendly to the Lupin franchise. It, the manga that the anime was based on was very adult, very adult. The anime tries to tone it down, um, especially uh, parts two and three. Um, of course, there'll be dis uh, some parts of the anime are more adult than others. Uh, I.e.g. the um, film or OVA Jigen's Gravestone is probably one of the most adult ones. I'm aware of Wolf's Castle Cag Cagliostro, on the other hand, is probably the most family friendly, um, which allows them to, um, which means there isn't as much sex or nudity in this film as you might find with other uh, Lupin stories, where it was a very, there's a quite a bit in, uh, in other properties, or even, a, there isn't even that, there isn't, a, a, actually, there isn't any at all, to be honest here, which it's actually a bit refreshing. You don't actually need uh, Fujiko uh, mainly, but uh, or anybody else having to strip every other five minutes. Um, just, just saying. Um, it's actually a little refreshing, uh, to be honest. Um, and it also allows the characters to continue being great characters without having to use excessive violence or sex and nudity to uh, show them off. Not that there isn't anything wrong with that, uh, but uh, well, in the context of what does the story and the target audience, in this case, it's a family film, so not, not really. Um, but there's still plenty to enjoy from the characters that are still recognisable from the previous instalments, uh, films and TV anime. Um, <clears throat> and also, I enjoy the Count's hench people, not the uh, covered up masked people, although they were pretty... Um, intimidating hench people but i meant like the butler and the head of security those guys were pretty cool um and some yeah some gr uh, good interactions between the characters and some really fun stuff and as the film goes along you get uh, revealed some more stuff about characters or around the history of cagliaistro uh, resulting in a pretty interesting um twist on what the treasure is 
if there was one pit nitpick about the animation, as I'll quickly go back to, there's one pit nitpick about that I have to mention is that the very end when there's lots of water coming out and surrounding the castle, there is a shot that does look more like a painting uh, still image um, rather than a moving picture. However, due to budgetary and uh, timing, perhaps, and also because it's 2D animation, um, it probably wouldn't be able to do lots of water rushing around the castle. So I'm going to forgive them for that. That was just a one piece of animation I wasn't so keen on. But for the um, limitations they had at the time, um, such as practicality, I'll, sl I'll let it slide. It's not really anything that's going to make me... It's not going to be an issue. Not not really. It's one shot. It's that it still works really effectively, to be honest. It's, and it's a very nice shot, to be honest. They're very nicely drawn. Um but into the rest of the animation, it's so beautiful. Some of the best 2D animation I've seen. Um, uh, it's also edited really well and some uh, great, the story flows at a uh, great pace. Um, watching the English dub version, uh, the, the, the original English dub version, I think, yeah, it's, it's good du uh, du uh, dub. I especially like the guy voicing Lupin. I think he's pretty, he's well casted. Um, to take me a bit of time to adjust to the voices of Goemon, Fujiko, and Zenigata. But I think as the film went on, especially the latter two, they definitely got great. Jigen was uh, pretty fun. The only issue I'll have with the cast is that they do sound a bit American because it was American dubbing uh, for the English, uh, English Ameri uh, American English dub. Um, but it just makes these Japanese characters, or in Lupin's case, French-Japanese, um, sound American in places. Um, this isn't so bad with the supporting characters. They a they um their original characters and b they don't sound that American as uh Jake Jigen, for example. Um he's probably the most notably American one of the main cast, but um the, the, the supporting cast actors they do really great jobs with their characters and I has especially the guy voicing voicing the count, he seems to be having a great time. And to be honest, I wouldn't blame him. He's doing a really great job. Um, and the music is also beautiful. Regular composer Yo Yuko on Onoho, I think. He does a beautiful, beautiful score, including a great opening song. And, uh, well, yeah, he composed the instrumental version of that. And he also, and like here with some James Bond songs, you get the instrumental version of the um, song played out a few times in the film. Um, not to mention the great Lupin the Third thing, which I'm pretty sure only got introduced a few years earlier with the st with the start of part two. It wasn't with part one anime, and it wasn't with the pilot short. Uh, Might have been in Mystery of Mamo, I'm not sure. That one was out, uh, came out after part two's anime started. Um, part two was pretty much on every week for 155 weeks from 1977 to 1980. Um, so uh, there'll be a cup. It uh, probably still be on when this film came out. It probably will be on the at the week, probably the weekend, um, uh, weekends I should say, uh, whilst the film was on. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure the theme was only introduced at the stuff once part two started up, and it's great to hear it here. It's great for the theme to be kicking in now and again, especially in the climax. Brilliant stuff. Some really exciting moments. Um, some gr brilliant action, like the car chase and the uh, clim two climaxes, the battle inside the castle and then the Count chasing Lupin and Clarissa and the confrontation at the clock tower. And just some spectacular stuff all around. Some amazing writing, great character development and performances. Um, well, I can't really speak for the Japanese version, but I presume they did br uh, brilliant performances. Definitely a, a range of great performances for the US dub. Um, and some some amazing music, great editing, and uh, all around just a spectacular movie. In the time they had to make it, they made a spectacular movie. And even if I hadn't gotten into Lupin, if I just found this movie by accident or just or been referred it, I probably still love this movie. Even if I didn't really know the characters or gotten into the franchise, if I was just watching this movie, I think I would still love it. Maybe not as much, but I think I'd still love it. It is a spectacular movie, and I. I, I recommend it to anybody, not just anyone who's checked out the anime. Although, if you are younger viewers, I would not recommend watching the anime until you're at least 12 um, for, for some stuff, and then 15 for others. And then I think there's a couple of stuff that will probably be in 18 territory. Um, I would say wait at least until you're 12 um, before checking out some of the series. Uh, series. 
Um, but for this one, this one is definitely a recommendation for uh, everybody, um, or at least everybody over the age of seven or eight. Um, I would say um, it is a PG over here. One of the few Lupin properties to be a PG or lower than a 12. Um, heck, there might, even, there might not even be that many 12s. It might most, most of them are probably 15s. Anyway, um, so Lupin the Third, The Castle of Cagliostro, or The Castle of Cagliostro, beautiful film. I shall be giving this film a 10 out of 10. Yep, a very well-deserved 10 out of 10. Hayato Miyazaki, you should be proud of yourself for, because he wasn't such a fan of the uh, the final product that he was making, but everybody else seemed to be, with Steven, Steven Spielberg calling it one of the greatest action movies of all time, and Lupin creator Monkey Punch called the, anim uh, the film one of his favourite interpretations of the characters, even though, like some other people at the time, he, wa he did... Uh, was a bit uh, weary of the change in the, how the character behaves in this film compared to previous in, um, previous versions of the character. He still calls it one of his favourite interpretations. And um, it, this film obviously led to Miyazaki and a fellow Lupin director and a fe another anime director eventually a few years later creating Studio uh, Ghibli and going on to be one of the most notable and famous anime directors of all time possibly the most celebrated as well so and it all started here well technically it all started with part one um build and so maybe some other anime shows but theat theatrical wise it all started here and he knocked it out of the park and he also co-wrote the story and so he did a great job there and i like he actually because the characters here are a bit different to how they usually are i think i may have mentioned this but def he, he's trying to make Lupin more of a hero than he usually is, and maybe trying to grow him up a little bit, grow him up a bit. Which, in terms of the anime, it has been 10 years since the pilot film, and 12 years since the manga. Although the anime technically started 8 years before this film, so 8, 10, and 12 years since the start of the anime, uh, the pilot film for that anime, and the original uh, manga when the character was created. Um, so... By 8 to 12 years of the character later, it is time for the character to start growing um, and start developing a bit more. And I think Miyazaki's direction uh, of both the character and the story that it takes him and his other character, the other characters in, is just spectacular and just amazing. Whew, that, that was an amazing film. That was that was that was amazing. That was beautiful. <sighs> Ayazaku Miyazaki, and I apologise for getting his first name wrong. Congratulations, you did a spectacular job. Anyway, so that's it from my review of Lupin the First, The Castle of Cagliostro. The next, I will be continuing doing the next couple of Lupin films, up to the fifth film. So the next film, The Legend of the Gold of Babylon, will be the um, will be my next Lupin the Third film review. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. <laughs> の Don't forget to click below to subscribe to the official Nicholas Payne Retro YouTube channel. Who would, along with a fellow Lupin the Third TV series director, would be two of the fan, uh, two of the three founding members of create, uh, would create, which has become uh, what Japan's, if not one of, then it is which has become one of, if not uh, by that point, until then. Uh, um, but anyway, so if uh, Lupin and Jagan plan to break into the castle, so Lup but on the way to, which is where Lupin starts uh, re getting his re uh, re reflections and uh, of what his previous... Um... And 
so along with our oh, certain um when the count um hears about lupin or the wolf in the version i watched is attempting to enter the castle um well and whilst that's going on lupin has devised a plan that involves him calling inspector kyochi although i think his name was changed here uh, the first name was changed and and they probably had um so in so the film could easily have looked but he still gets some great personal moments with Lu uh well not personal interaction Um, definitely great performances for the UK, uh, sorry, uh, US dubbing, I should say. Definitely great in the time that they had to make it. They like with um, over one of the few Lupin properties to get a lower lower than a twelve certificate. And original Lupin manga Monkey Punch, uh, and the creator of Lupin the Third Monkey Punch, who um, cre and the creator of the Lupin the Third manga, but he still liked this film. Uh, well, he says it's the but he still called it one of his favorite interpret uh, in in interpreter. Well done, uh, Miyazaki. Hi, Isa. So the next one, the third installment, the secret of the gold of Babylon. Was it Legend of the Gold of Babylon? Uh, no, is it Legend or it might be Secret? Whatever um, text will say which one is right, Legend or Secret. Um, but that'll be next. And yeah. Right.